Well, good morning, everyone, and good morning to those of you that are joining us on the internet um, and those that will watch us a little bit later on on YouTube. Uh, I want to go right into today's uh, topic and teaching. Uh, last time we were together, we talked about understanding curses, and we talked about uh, deliberate curses as well as non-deliberate curses, and I believe that we have that up there on YouTube, so go there and listen to it later on if you haven't uh, heard it already. Um, other type of curses that exist, because I believe curses are something that we really need to, to tackle, and as we do, we go out and do uh, Deliver America, and we certainly want uh, those of you that would like to, to, to come out there uh, with us to different regions, different cities. Of course, we'll be in Detroit uh, this upcoming weekend on Friday, Saturday. But curses are something that we need to deal with. Um, I think it's something that maybe sometimes we either take it to one extreme or the other, we get a little bit too crazy with it and everything's a curse, which is not true. Or we simply just disregard it and say, well, I don't really need to focus in on that. So I believe that we need to have some balance, uh, specifically in uh, deliverance ministry, which includes dealing with curses uh, that exist. So again, there's deliberate curses, non-deliberate curses, and uh, organizational curses, which is what we're going to talk about next, organizational Curses. Now, organizational curses can be uh, basically religion, religious type curses, okay? Remember, uh, Christ came to bring a kingdom. He didn't come to bring a religion. So, uh, religions in and of themselves can be a form of how someone can have a curse placed on their life. Religions could be uh, anywhere, uh, you know, it could be Islam, it could be Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Mormonism, Catholicism. Scientology, Jehovah Witness, uh, legalism, okay, legalism uh, being a form of control. These are all types of organizations uh, that, you know, curses can, 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 uh, can come onto a person or a family because, any, cause, because what religion ends up doing is basically just creating ide uh, idolatry, okay, we begin to idolize uh, that particular religion and we're not to have any idols where God's very clear about that. We're to serve God, serve Him alone, and it's all about uh, the kingdom, okay? Basically, through religions is how uh, psychic prayers and psychic-type uh, things can, can take place, spiritualism, um, fleshly ideologies, okay? What a particular religion believes. Again, it doesn't matter what ism it is, but... Uh, organizational curses, if you subscribe to these things, uh, can and do take place because of that. That's why I say hands off religion, <laughs> okay? Hands off religion. Uh, let's keep our hands uh, free from that and our eyes and our minds certainly free from that. And let's just do what Jesus said to do, and that is allow the kingdom of God in us to be advanced as we go into all the world and preach that, uh, the good news. Denominations, this is an area today, a, re, a, a reality. Uh, there's anywhere between 30, I've heard between 30 and 40,000 denominations within Christianity alone. Uh, these are problems, not that they're all bad, okay, because uh, there's some denominations that actually do some good things. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Um, you know, you could hear a, a message by someone in a denomination. It could be a very good and accurate message. Um, I, I don't believe in throwing the baby out with the bathwater, okay? But the problem with denominations is, just like religions, the different isms of the world, denominations have typically been birthed out of rebellion, okay? Out of rejection, um, out of division, okay? I mean, it's amazing when you study these things how, you know, you have, and I'll just use one for example, Church of God, Church of God in Christ, Church of God of the Holy Spirit, Church of God of Jesus, you know, uh, you know, and it, it just kind of drills down. Sometimes it's, you know, Church of, uh, of uh, God versus, uh, you know, Church of God in Christ. Okay, so Church of God, Church of God in Christ. I mean, all you did was add a couple words to it, but the, the ideologies are huge. Uh, racism is involved in a lot of these denominations. So that promotes a problem because today we have people that know more about their denomination than they do about God and his kingdom. They can tell you all about who founded it. 
when it was founded, who the founding fathers are. They may have pictures of people that founded it. Um, and it's a very dangerous thing, okay? And when people get so engrossed in that, again, what they end up doing is they begin to create idols, okay? Um, they create, when you have an idol, you're basically saying, this is it, this is my God. And now everyone else, so now you have, and I'm just using it as an example, Church of God in Christ versus, you know, Assemblies of God, they'll fight. They'll fight. Now they may say, well, we have a common platform, we all believe in Christ, but start talking about baptism. Okay? Start talking about this. Start talking about this, you know, the prophetic. Or start talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. You're going to get to a point when there's major contentions surrounding doctrine. And, then, and, and God doesn't want us doing that. I mean, he doesn't want us having these type of divisions. So when we connect, when we associate, when we... And, and these things get deep, but I've never been in one. Um, but from talking to people, interviewing people, apparently when you you know, come into like a local church and enter under a certain denomination, uh, you join and you get membership papers and you sign the papers and it says, you know, things like uh, by, the, uh, 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 by the bylaws and constitution of and blank, whatever that denomination is. So you're basically signing and saying, I agree with that. Okay? And the only thing that we should agree with is the Word of God. Um, you know, I've had this conversation with people where they talk about, you know, even things that are written uh, from what's called the early church fathers, okay, which there's tremendous amount of knowledge to obtain from those writings, okay. But I've always said this is that you know let's not because you know you have the Apostles' Creed, okay. If you study this stuff, but who's to say that just because they wrote it they were right? There's only one thing right, and that's the Word of God. So we always have to take the position that look. I need to understand it through the lens of the Word of God. Now, all these other things we can look at, but they have to testify of the truth. They can't start going in their own direction, or else, again, uh, we're in danger of, of running to a different religion or uh, denomination. Okay? Then you have Freemasons. I'm not going to spend time there. I just want to put that there. Okay, Freemasons is something that, in this country specifically, is, uh, you know, it's something that's real, and those that engaged in it, and I do know people that were engaged in it, and, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the secret societies, even the Illuminati, I don't want to get in deep into that, but uh, those secret societies, even political organizations, you know, you, you get into this stuff, and you'll find out that they have secret codes, okay, they have secret terminology, secret uh, signs, symbols, handshakes, I mean, it gets, it gets pretty, pretty deep. And it's basically a form of racism. It's a form of keeping certain people groups or even uh, economic uh, uh, classes in particular things. And it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's all about, you know, exclusive. You know, it's, we keep everybody out except us. If you're not part of us, then you're not, you're not in the know, you're not in the end. And quite frankly, it gets so deep to where, you know, you're, you're the one cursed. They look at, you know, at people outside of that and say, you know, you're the one curse, you need to come in, and if you want to be successful, join this organization, and so on. And again, we have to be very, very uh, careful, or else we'll find ourselves, things happening in our life, and we'll wonder, why is all this stuff going on? Well, that which you connect to, you always have to say, what's the genesis of it? What's the birth of that? You know, there's, diff there's a ton of different movements out there, even today. People are like, oh, let's do this, let's do that, and it's like, wait a minute, but just... You know, I'm real concerned about people joining different groups and different uh, uh, movements when you don't even know, you know, and listen, I don't care what picture they paint, I don't care what the media says, I don't care what their, uh, their poster says, their, their t-shirt, their flags, whatever paraphernalia they have, at the end of the day, you need to find out what, how did that thing start, okay? It's very, very, very dangerous. And then, of course, fraternities and sororities, um, Again, these are things, I, I was in a fraternity, and I'm not saying that fraternities and sororities don't have some good works. They do, okay? But just because something is good doesn't mean it's right, okay? Um, I was in a fraternity. I, I know what that fraternity did. I can't speak for all fraternities, and I know the different chants. Uh, I know the Latin that we had to, we had to speak to certain things in Latin. Um, there were different rituals. Uh, you pledge. In other words, you take an oath to that uh, society. I mean, there were some <laughs> there were some things that I, I didn't know then, but 
Well, I guess I did. I just was in the world. I mean, I really kind of knew it. It was demonic. I mean, we go to graveyards. Okay. I mean, we go to graveyards and do certain things and whatever. Uh, perversions of the mind. Uh, a lot of alcohol, drugs, you know, all this stuff. And so, again, I'm not saying that every fraternity or sorority does that. But again, you know, we send our kids off to college, and then, you know, they say, well, you know, it's a good fraternity, it's a good sorority, they're doing some good work. Uh, there's sororities and fraternities that are geared specifically to race. Again, very dangerous. Uh, they're, they're even connected to political affiliation. They're affiliated with politics. So we don't want to, as believers, connect in with this stuff. Okay? We're about our father's business, and that is not his business. I'll say that again. We are about to be about the father's business, and religion, denominations, fraternities, sororities, all this stuff, Freemasons, Illuminati, that's not God. Okay? Spiritualists, psychics, psychic powers, you know, horoscopes, all this stuff, that, that's not God. God has for, for, forbid his people. He said, do not engage with that. And father knows best, right? So, so... Why? I mean, sometimes I think, well, God just doesn't want me to have fun. It's, <laughs> no, or God wants me, you know, he doesn't want me to do anything. No, he wants me to be a hermit and do nothing but study the Bible. No, absolutely, that's not true. But he does it, he's trying to protect us because he knows of the, the, the dark realm, the, the, the underworld, the evil that's out there and what it can do to mankind. Um, and again, we can go really deep on that. I, I would recommend that you take the deliverance school because we'll, we'll really get deep into the origin of demons and all that stuff. Um, and then, of course, military. I mean, I love the military. The military is great. But there are people in the military that just go a little bit too far with it. Okay? Um, actually, one of the things that I'm seeing as I know people in it and study people in it and talk to them, and, and when we're doing deliverance, we find out that people have demons. We'll say, you know, military demons come out. And we, we see a lot of pride. A lot of pride. Okay? Unteachableness. Um, very stern, um, but one of the things that I'm seeing, and perhaps maybe you guys may, may see this also, is that there's a lot of dysfunction in the family. Okay? They try to bring order through a military approach, but it's the woman is talked to in many cases in a condescending way. There's a lot of belittling of children. Um, you know, there, there, could be, there could even be uh, trauma that, that took place in the soldier's life or you know, what have you. And again, it caused a lot of problem. And one of, the, one of the things, we'll talk about it later, about curses is that when there's a breakdown in family, that is typically, typically an indication of a curse. Anytime there's dysfunction in the family, okay, you have to look at it as that could potentially be a curse, either a current generational curse or perhaps it's a curse you started. Okay, all curses are not generational. Some are started by us. Okay, and, and, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, uh, those some organizational curses. Uh, God spake all these words, this is it found in Exodus 20, verse 1 through 5. And by the way, I'll put these slides out there. If you want to take pictures, you certainly can. But I'll put these slides out there on the AOTB, AOTBM, or excuse me, New Breed Equipping Platform Facebook page. Um, in Exodus 20, God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt where you were slaves. You must not have any other gods except me. Okay, so again, organizations and all the things that I just talked about can be another god to you. Okay? Um, people take pride in the organization that they're with. And, again, you see it in the political arena. We have, in our country, we have a Democrat organization and a Republican organization, and we always see the fighting going on there. Um, and it goes on, again, to denominations and, and so on. So God says, don't have any of the gods except me. You must not make for yourselves any idol that looks like anything, watch this, in the sky above or on the earth below or in the water below the land. Okay? You must not worship or serve any idol because I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God. If you hate me, now idolatry is a form of hatred against God. I will punish your children. Wow. This is how generational curses begin. I will punish your children and even your grandchildren. 
and great-grandchildren. So we're talking about three generations there. Okay? So again, now, people say, well, is God, you know, God's, God, you know, God's uh, hating, hating on my kids, and God's hating... No, really, when you look at this in the, in the Hebrew or the Hebrew text, it's speaking about God is permissive to it. In other words, God's going to say, you know, I'm going to let... You know, the enemy's going to come. I'm not, I can't get involved because you have departed from me and you went this way. You have, you're not worshiping me, but you're worshiping idols. And that idol could be the name of a fraternity or political affiliation or, or a denomination. Okay? So we have to, like I said, we have to, we have to be very careful that we, in our mind, don't think, oh, these things are okay. Ah, it's just, because you know, that's what, have you ever noticed Christians are very just passive sometimes? They're either really weird and dogmatic or very passive. Okay? And there are certain things you need to draw a line in the sand and say, no, I don't cross that. Yeah. Okay? But this stuff like, well, it's okay. No, it's not. It's okay because you said so, or I said so. No, we have to do what the Word of God says. Okay? So those are type of organizational uh, curses. And then there's cursed objects. Cursed objects. Now, again, from, from what we talked about last time, just because an object organization is cursed, that doesn't mean that if you vote for a Democrat or Republican president, that somehow that you are cursed, okay? Or else we just wouldn't vote, none of us, okay? What it is is that if you're deep into that and you believe everything that either one of them say or you're in some organization, I mean, you know, you could walk, you could walk into a Freemasonry hall and have a wedding there because you rented out their hall. It doesn't mean that a curse is coming upon you. So let's not get weird about this, okay? We're talking about believing the tenets, the faith, uh, the, the bylaws, the constitution, the things that they have established, soul tying with that, coming into an agreement in your mind with that philosophy or that way of thinking and acting. That's what we're talking about. Same thing with cursed objects. Just because there's a cursed object and you touch it doesn't mean a demon got on you. Okay, so... Um, but let's let you know. Let's talk about because it. It, has anybody ever touched a lottery ticket? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean oh, you're cursed, you know, and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, we're talking about actually believing in the system of the lottery. Now that's that's a different thing. Okay. But cursed objects uh, can be uh, charms, lucky, like lucky type charms, not the cereal. Okay. So, <laughs> so if you if you like lucky charms, the marshmallow and the whatever it is. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So when you, you can, you can. Now, there's Christians that say I can't give my kids lucky charms, you know, because they're magically delicious. Okay, you know, you, know, you can't have lucky charms. The kids over there crying, oh my kid, my friends eat lucky charms, and they got a little toy. We used to have toys in the box. I don't think they have toys in the box anymore. Yeah. Cereal, but anyway. So, uh, but but again, I'm talking about charms, uh, different type of jewelry and things like that. Things like a rabbit foot, uh, a horseshoe, an upside down horseshoe. That's typically a, a, a sign. A symbol, uh, object of uh, luck. Obviously, zodiac signs. Okay, you hear a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, to believe in that, and you know, reading just like reading horoscope. I mean, to believe that. Oh, you know, people people actually get into you know when you uh, Chinese food, you break the yes, <coughs> you yes. break the cool of cookie. That's nasty. That cookie is totally nasty. But you, you know, <laughs> nobody ever eats it. You ever you ever notice you go to a Chinese restaurant that they leave the cookie, but yeah. they take the little thing. And, and, and they're kind of, you know, nowadays they're actually a little bit kind of fun, funny because they're, they're different than before. Before they actually used to put horoscopes. Now they kind of say the, how to say a word in Chinese or something, or you're going to have a nice day. I mean, that's fine. I'm going to have a nice day. Great. Um, but people can get into stuff like that and where it says, you know, beware of crossing the street today. You know, they get into these phobias and stuff like that. Again, you don't want to crack it open and say, I believe that when I open this, that when I read that, that it's going to, that that's it. You know, next thing you know, you're ordering fortune cookies on Amazon. You know, boxes of them and stuff like that. Right. So that's what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, but lottery tickets, I mean, charms, lucky, lucky, anything of luck. Uh, there is a demon called Fortuna, okay, the demon of fortune, where people uh, will buy lottery tickets because they believe that the way to prosperity is through a lottery ticket, or, or betting, or gambling. Okay, it doesn't have to be a lottery ticket. It could go, it could go to the horse uh, races. Now, if some, and by the way, if we ever see any of us in the, at the stadium and 
horses are running, don't start saying, oh, they're betting. Because sometimes people just watch horse racing. I, I would like to see the, the, with the greyhounds. I would love to see those dogs run. I mean, those things, they sing, those things peel out, okay? Um, so, again, let's not get, get weird about it. Um, but I'm talking about people that are into betting. Uh, you know, maybe you find them at, uh, there's casinos in Columbus, I understand. Um, you know, again, there's people that are deep into that, okay? Now, if somebody gives you a lottery ticket, if somebody says, here, I'm going to bless you with a lottery ticket, you know, don't, don't get all crazy with it. Oh, my God, I can't touch the lottery ticket. <clears throat> No, scratch that baby. <laughs> we just get crazy, okay? Um, a different type of uh, you know, crystals, stones. I, I, I'm now finding that people go places and they have stones put on them. And the stones have some type of therapeutic or healing power. I guess they're warm stones or something like that. Uh, they're used for healing. Again, uh, not stuff like that. No, who, who's the one that heals? God, God heals. He didn't. I don't see anywhere in the Word of God where it says he'll use stones to heal. Okay, now hands. Okay, healing hands. But I don't see anything about stones. Okay, um, crystals. Now again, that doesn't mean you can't have crystal china. We're talking about crystals used to as some type of psychic power or some type of object to connect into something spiritual. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to speak up. I don't okay. have that other right. mic. So. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, um, it's good that you're making this real <coughs> plain because people take things and they take it to an extreme. Yeah. So uh, there's, um, you can go to um, somewhere and get a massage and they may use a stone to rub and manipulate you. And that's not, I mean, you're just going to be relaxed right. as opposed to people believe in these things. And yeah. they're like, oh, it's the stone that's healing me. You know, so making it clear that it's nothing wrong yes. if you were to go and, you know, and have a, um, some type of, um, when they go to, you know, get relaxed and they rub your stones up. Because I know they did that with me one time on my leg. Yeah, rub your stones. I know, like, oh, that feels yeah, really stone. good. <laughs> but I mean, I went there one time and then I'm like, I'm not going and going, oh, I need the stone to heal me. So right. that's where we have to make the difference that we don't take things because that was, that's what people do. And the same with the lottery, you know, what you were saying. I, re I remember um, that um, someone was talking about the lottery, and they were every day. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, it was almost like they were using that as a means of, of like, okay, the numbers got to line up and all this. I'm like, right. what are you doing? So it's, it's those things that, I, that they believe. They believe that those things are going to be where they get blessed from or the stones are going to be where they get healed from. As opposed to, you know, and, and but what happens with believers is then we can start getting spooky. Like, oh, don't touch us a stone, like you're saying. Or, or don't touch the light, it's going to jump off. You know, but it's like, no, it's not going to jump out on you or nothing's going to come on you unless you believe in it. You're using that thing the wrong way. So I'm glad you're Precisely. sharing this. It's really good. Yeah, Thank you. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's really more about what's the condition of your mind. What is, what is you know, your, your, your emotions? Are you attached to that? Are you connected into that? Um, if so, then yeah, then, then you're opening the door. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, again, it's, 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 it's like the stones. I mean, hey, I, I, I am one that loves massages, okay? And, it, it, and I don't have it often. Uh, Elder Norman, he's, an, he's a pro at this from a male perspective, having uh, pedicures. I know that used to go quite often. Uh, do you still do that? Every bit, not, I know you can't do enough. But, but, you know, when they take that, they have a scrubbing stone. You know, they got to get those calluses off, okay? You, you, you got some stuff on there that, because if not, they'll, they'll need a hacksaw next time. But, you know, you can't, so you can't freak out and say, oh, it's a stone. Oh, the stone is touching my feet. And my feet are, you know, prepared with the gospel of peace, and, you know, and, you know, <laughs> and, you know so, so again, you know, let's not get crazy, but, but to, 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 to my wife's point, if you go in there and say, okay, now use those stones, I want the onyx, because the onyx represents the healing powers right, of the right. spiritual world. Put those on me, and as I lay, I can feel the spiritual source in my spine. There's people that, there's people out there like that, okay? It's, it's your mind. Not yes. so much the object. Yes. Okay, you got that? That's what we have to do. It's not the object, but it's uh, the mind. Okay? 
Um, then we could go into uh, occultic or entertainment, okay? People play games. Uh, I was at the movie theater the other day, and uh, a movie's out about Ouija. Okay, it's, it's of course, you know, the demonic season, Halloween time, and all that other stuff. So they got all that stuff out there. And I was like, Ouija? Now, now that's a demonic game. I, I remember when I was very young, we had it in our home. Um, and I played it. I don't know who I played it with. I don't know if I played with my sister or whatever, but yeah, that thing worked. Yeah. I mean, we asked the question, it was spelling names and all that stuff. What's my name? And it's, I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Because, because we actually believed, because we were told, if you do this, it, it works. So there was a connectivity, there was a psychic connectivity with that. And again, those are things that we stay away from. Um, uh, uh, music, certain types of music, okay, very demonic. Now, now I'm not saying if you pop a track in, I've, I've had, uh, I've gotten in cars and somebody left a CD in and next thing you know, I'm hearing words that I was like, oh my God, you know, it doesn't, my car's not demonic because it had it in it. I'm, you know, demons that come on me, there's not a curse on me and stuff like that. I'm talking about where you get into that culture. Uh, for example, recently, uh, Beyonce, uh, Sasa Fierce, whichever sphere she's operating at the time, but uh, she was on stage and apparently they said her, her ear ring came out of her ear and blood started coming out of her ear. And, and, what, and I'll show you the, how, a, how a curse from cursed objects and, and, and affiliation with a, a, an idol in the case of Beyonce. It's so deep. Some of these people are so deep. And it, it, it was the same thing with the Beatles. People follow the Beatles. I mean, it's not just Beyonce. But people get so into that that they create a culture underneath it. And when blood came out, there were numerous people, okay, numerous people that began to say, because our God bled, we have to bleed. And they start cutting themselves in the concert. Oh, what? Yeah, they start literally cutting. And that's something in, in, in the deliverance, you know, there are people that cut blood because what they said is we now, our God bled, and we now must cut covenant with our God. Because people do believe. So again, it's a, it's a, now if you have a Beyonce track, and I'm not saying that you should, I'm not saying you should, I, I, I okay, not judging. What I am saying is that uh, when you look at the artist, find out what they're really about. Right. You, you'll find out that some of them <clears throat> are very deep into uh, witchcraft, uh, spiritualism, psychic things, and I don't care, they can be a gospel artist, I don't care. Okay, you need to see what they're, because you got gospel artists that are in the homosexuality and believe strongly in that culture. So you don't want to connect to that. I'm not saying if you turn on your XM radio and that song's playing and the gospel artist is homosexual that somehow a curse comes on you. I'm not saying that. Are you with me? What I'm saying is when you subscribe to that, oh, that type of culture, then it can be very dangerous. And of course, religious artifacts, crosses. I've, I, uh, I've been in deliverance. Some of you may remember. Uh, I've even told people, take off that cross. And they're like, why? It's the symbol of Christianity. Well, uh, no, it's the symbol of death. Okay? There's nowhere we should have crosses. And then they have Jesus on the cross, which is even worse. I don't remember. Did he stay on the cross? Yeah. Did he raise from the dead? Okay? All right. So, so here we are symbolically. Just saying, well, you know, here, it's so people subscribe to that. It's, there's people that believe that there's power, that they think there's power in these things. Yes. Crosses, there's, the, touch the cross. Yes. Okay, now, again, because now we're looking at that, and that's where the danger is. I don't care what it is, objects can be a curse. Yes. Anything that's saying, well, that's of God, touch this and you'll be blessed. You know, so now we have, whether it's a cross, it can be um, a different type of artifacts. There's people that, I see people with the ark. The Ark of the Covenant. They'll have a, a replica of the Ark, and people will actually, I, I've seen people bow down to worship the Ark. Okay? So, and then we wonder why problems happen, because he, I just read the scripture, you can't have anything, even objects, before me. God didn't want us to worship the Ark. Okay? It's not what it's about. Um, candles, we see this in Catholicism, of course. Incense, temples. You see this a lot in Eastern religions, okay? I've been in houses, and I'm like, what does that smell? They got a big old pot. Remember we used to go in a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, Middle Eastern, you know, religions. You go in there, they have, they have the picture of the elder of the home, and they have this huge pot of incense and everything. So when you go in there, your clothes smell, you, you, you got to brush your, your tongue. I mean, it just gets all, just nasty. It smells everywhere. because They believe in that. They take it, they take the incense, and... You know, it's some type of spiritual type thing. Again, so there's people that believe in that. 
sand vials. There's people that, there's Christians that go over to uh, Israel and take sand from the sea and the shores of Galilee and come back and say the sand is blessed because Jesus walked there the sand's blessed. So would our sand in, 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 in Florida ain't blessed? God made it. It's all blessed. But people then they start believing in that stuff. We even have our television shows that say send in your money we'll send you a vial of stuff. That's wrong people. That's not where we're not connected to that stuff. But Christians do it all the time. Right? And then statues. There's statues. I remember years ago we had some deliverance and we told people to bring in uh, objects that they, you know, wanted to uh, get rid of. And uh, people were bringing in different statues. Okay? We had a, a statue, of, a small replica of the, of the goddess Diana. Because we bring this stuff into our homes, right? Because we go overseas or we see stuff on, we're like, oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. And then we don't know, again, we don't want to connect with those type of things. Books, uh, excuse me, drug usage, that's, that's another one. It's an object, drug usage, whatever it may be. Um, drugs open the door into uh, the demonic realm, okay? Uh, there are people that I know of today that have been deep into drugs, drug usage, and even in the uh, mental health arena, there are things where people that take drugs, it begins to develop like psychosis in them, drug-induced psychosis, um, they can't function in life, they have different type of problems, uh, you know, typically uh, they have a lot of family problems because they have a lot of anger issues and, and so on. So people that take, that really get into, and I'm not talking about you have pain and you're taking uh, uh, a Percocet. I'm not, okay, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm talking about the person saying, man, I, I ain't in no pain, but I gotta give you some Percocets. There's that connectivity, and drugs are very, very, you know, uh, very dangerous because they're they're tied to uh, the occult. Okay. Um, then we have uh, books. <laughs> I put in here a couple books that you know some things. Uh, this you can find these in Walmart, by the way. Uh, Justify my thug. It's a series. It's a whole series of uh, thug behavior, and people apparently it's become cultic. People are really into it because they believe in thug culture. Okay, and uh, a lot, a, a lot of females are. I mean, you, you go online and look at this stuff. Has anybody ever seen what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. you've seen it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, serious love stories and pimps. You know, glorifying pimps and prostitutes and that. You know, no. And then you have the Harry Potter. Harry, I, I can't believe that people actually Christians actually say, "Oh, there's nothing wrong with Harry Potter." Really? Do you know that in real life there is actually the Harry Potter School of Witchcraft? Just like we have a school of deliverance and prophetic, they have a Harry Potter school of witchcraft. And actually, there's several of them around the world. You can go actually learn witchcraft. But we're giving all the kids. I heard my neighbor's kids saying, I, I, I cast the curse of, and they're using the Harry Potter terms and all that stuff. I cast that curse on you. Okay? Now, I'm not saying if you were at the library and you touched the Harry Potter book, that a curse comes on you. No, I'm saying that if you actually, because there's people that religiously believe in this stuff. Okay? Um, and then, of course, there's another uh, uh, book called Games People Play, okay? And it's actually, then you have video games that come off these games, and there's all about the occult, okay? And a lot of people get into this. And then finally, uh, pornography, okay? Uh, in Psalms 101.3, David said, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. So pornography is a type of cursed object. And porn mentally builds a type of altar, okay, for sex thoughts in people's mind. It's a type of high place, and we're called as believers to cast down every high thing. Pornography, and, 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 and again, I'm talking about people, because there's people that they're just bound, and they believe in it. When you study pornography, you'll find out that even watching pe other people have uh, sex Going back through the whole religious and, 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 and uh, idol, idolatry type things, that is something that was used as a form of entertainment to lure you into those particular cultures. So it's very dangerous, and again, uh, it's when that thing becomes high in your mind, and, and again, God, God always detested uh, the high place that Israel put other gods in their minds. So 
pornography, I always tell people, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. In today's society, you know, again, it used to be a book or a video. You'd have to go buy a book, and then you were scared to buy the book, because you didn't want to be seen, you'd buy the book. Uh, uh, then the whole video thing, and now, of course, internet has made it so easy. So easy. I mean, things will pop up. You, you'd be on, you'd be surfing, and all of a sudden, something pops up. Yeah. Like, Whoa! I remember we had that happen one time. We were, we were actually at our kitchen. Yes. You remember that? One time, we, I forgot, we went to search something, and we hit enter. So about and church. It was about church. And, and all of a sudden, a naked woman appeared. And we're kind of like, whoa! <laughs> You're like, okay. We was kind of, you kind of like open it back up like this. Like, okay, how do I get it? You know, and then, of course, you know, you learn how to start to block those sites and, you know, whatever through different type of, uh, of uh, software and, and, and stuff like that. But again, uh, that, that's a cursed object. Uh, Acts chapter 6, 19, verse 17 Make a note of this. Of course, this talks about how uh, it was soon news all over Ephesus that both with both the Jew and the Greek, the real, realization spread that God was and behind what was happening. Curiosity about Paul developed into reverence for the master Jesus. I, I want to say something about that because that's real good. Notice it says curiosity about Paul developed. So people were connected to Paul. But look at why they were connected to Paul. Okay. Developed because of reverence of Christ. So when people connect to other people, it's good, but it should only be for reverence to Christ. Okay? Not to that person. It says, many of those who thus believed came out of the closet. See, we need Christians to come out of the closet. And made a clean break with, break with their secret society, sorcery, excuse me. All kinds of witches and warlocks came out of the woodwork with their books of spells and incantations, and made a huge bonfire of them. Someone estimated their worth at 50,000 silver coins. I believe today it would be like $400,000. In such ways, it became evident that the word, of, uh, the word of the way, excuse me, the word of the master was now sovereign and prevailed in Ephesus. Let's move on now to self-imposed curses, which I think is very huge, okay? Uh, self-imposed curses. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37 out of the Message Bible. It says this, let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Boy, we know that, right? Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Salvation meaning deliverance. Words can also be your damnation, meaning curse. Okay? Of course, Proverbs 6, verse 2. King James Version says, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of, their, of your mouth. I said this in the previous uh, teaching on, on curses, understanding curses, is that when your words are released, you got two things. That, that you got either demons are, are going to gravitate to your words or angels are going to gravitate to your words. Okay? Angels are waiting. They're hearkening. They're waiting for you to speak. But they only travel down the words that are faith filled, positive, godly, right, just, pure, perfect, honest, just, of a good report. Demons, on the other hand, when you speak words, it opens the door for demons to then travel with your words. Whether those words are released towards someone, or in this case, we're talking about self-imposed curses, words that are released against you. So I believe that this is, this is where a lot of time needs to be spent because this is typically how curses operate in our life through words. Okay? The stuff about objects and organizations, good information, but this is something that you control, okay? Your mouth, or you should control your mouth, okay? People say, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't have, you know, the Bible says no man can tame. No, that's talking about a natural man. You're no longer a natural man, right? You're a spiritual man, renewed, okay? So your tongue can be tamed by the renewed mind. When our mouth is flippant, we can tell we have a mind problem. People say, oh, you got a mouth problem. No, you have a mind problem, okay? All right, uh, self-imposed cur curses. These are self-inflicted wounds. Again, 
They originate out of the mind. Okay, remember, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So what you, what you speak is coming as a, as a direct result of how you're thinking. You don't speak something different than what you're thinking. Okay? Uh, remember we used to have this little saying right here? We used to say this quite a bit. What you hear is what you see. And what you see is what you think. And what you think is what you do. Okay? What you hear is what you see. Seeing is an imagination. We're talking about imagination. So you could hear something, okay? And you could even hear it audibly. You could hear it within your own mind. You see it. You begin to imagine it. And what you imagine is what you begin to focus in and what you begin to concentrate on and what you really really begin to deep, dig deep on. And you, you begin to... Um, What's the word you used to always say? You begin to, where you, you kind of reconcile in your mind. You're, I forgot the word, you use it quite a bit when you're talking about the mind. But anyways, you, you're, 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 you're focused in on it. And what you're focused in on, what you're thinking, is what you're going to end up doing. Okay? So when, pe when you see people or even yourself and you see actions that are cursed or damned, or not of God, it's because of bad thoughts. And it may not, it's not, and it may, could be bad thoughts created by you, or it could be bad thoughts created by your family, or all those different things that you're connected to. See, if you connect it to, like, let's say, a denomination or some religion, you're going to think like that. Because yeah. that's what you're going to hear. Yeah. You're going to hear messages about, again, I remember we were in a, a funeral of her, her cousin. And uh, he had died in Chicago, and there was nothing, you know, the, the, the funeral was about, actually at that time, it was about politics and elect, trying to elect uh, Barack Obama. They didn't, even, they, they, they didn't give any eulogy. There was nothing said about his life. There was nothing said about Christ, the kingdom, nothing. So when you're, when you're part of that, that's what you hear, and then what you hear is what you see, and what you see is what you think, and what you are part of is what you're going to end up doing. Right? Notice religious people all act the same. You can spot them out. There's something about you. Just look at them and say, oh, they're, they're just religious. Okay? They begin to dress the same. They begin to walk the same, talk the same, look the same. Okay? Respond the same. Okay? Yeah. Um, generational curses typically are started by words. Because our words are a form of agreement. When you say something, you're actually saying, I actually agree with that thought. Right? Yep. I agree with that. Uh, what do you mean, Apostle? Well, you say something like, I'm sick. <laughs> You're agreeing with that. I don't have any money to give. You're agreeing with where'd you get that thought from? Who told you that? Where'd you get that from? Well, my 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 checkbook says I don't have anything. Okay? Why don't you have anything? Well, you don't understand, Apostle. I, I, don't, I didn't have anything left over. Why? Well, how much money did you spend? Why did you buy that? Why did you buy it then? Why did you finance it? And it gets, you, keep, you keep on drilling down, okay? At the end of the day, there's some type of agreement. You agreed with something. Okay? You could, you could agree. It gets so bad, you can actually agree with an advertisement. And you can see an advertisement, and that advertisement will have it to where you actually come into agreement so strong in your mind that you'll buy that. And then, watch this, then later on when you can't pay for it or it binds you to where you can't live, you can't give, you can't go on vacation, whatever, then you start complaining about it out of your mouth, and the cycle just continues to perpetuate. Okay? That's called a curse. You don't look at that. They think, well, that's a problem. No, that's a curse. When it's always happening, somebody that always never has money, you're cursed. Okay? Yep. I mean, I could understand one week. Maybe a month you had some problems. But you never have any money? Well, it gets quiet at that time. I don't yeah. know. Okay. We'll, we'll, talk, maybe we'll talk about that. Words are a connection point, And, of course, words are powerful. Right? Words are connected points. So when we release something, we come into agreement. Notice you typically gravitate to people that speak the same thing you speak. 
You typically gravitate or you surround yourself with people that say the same thing you're saying, which isn't necessarily bad if you're saying the right thing. So now you have to evaluate you. What are you saying? This is why we always have to be so uh, humble to go through self-deliverance to make certain that, you know, we're really not supposed to be saying anything to ourselves, but what we say must line up with what the Father says. So you really, so technically you can't get around people, you can't agree with people or be part of their circle that say, I don't have. Because that goes totally against the word of God, doesn't it? Amen. That's right. But yet, birds of a feather flock together. And we typically would say, yeah, I understand. I remember when, you know, this years ago before I was saved, we used to always, in Chicago, we used to sit on the porch. And we'd sit around and just talk, we'd talk about all the problems. Yeah, man, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate that word. By the way, today I hate that word. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I don't. That's what I... Because yeah, people tell you, they'll tell you all their problems. And today, it's like, yeah, yeah this, that's happening. Yeah, that's happening. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I don't. Because I'm not going to agree with what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. I don't. As a matter of fact, I don't want to know what you're saying. Right? Then people say, well, you're just being me. No, I'm guarding my mind. I'm guarding my heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Don't you want to live? Life means life abundant, right? Don't you want to live? So you have to guard what goes in your heart. Doesn't mean you're mean or nasty to somebody. There are people that are mean and nasty, but just because you don't want to associate with that nonsense doesn't mean you're mean. It means that you're actually, it means you're, 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 you're righteous following the righteousness of God. He doesn't want you agreeing with that. Have no, have no agreement, have no fellowship with the works of darkness. Darkness is the works of darkness can start with your tongue. That's right. All right, all right, amen. So our words are powerful. Self-imposed curses, belittling yourself, okay? I'm stupid. You can start, I mean, that, that's a self-imposed curse. Does God say you're stupid? What are you, you coming into agreement with? Society, your parents, your house? What somebody else said, what the preacher said, what your girlfriend said, whatever. No. So that's a belittling, that you're belittling self. I'm such an airhead. Oh, I just can't, I'm always forget. I'm just so dumb. I, I don't know. No, we need to zip it. And, and you know what? Can not just us zip it, but when you find your brother and sister, correct them, please. Amen. Just say, hey, st stop. Just tell them stop. And do it out of love and just say, you know what? No. No. People say, I can't. D -d 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 Stop. Doubting self. I can't do it. Oh, that was I was that, I was notorious for that. Years ago, many years ago, thirty some years ago, I used to always I can't. Okay, I can't do that. Thank God for my wife. She she cast that demon out. Uh, diagnosing self. Oh, this is something that we always do. Oh, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, well, you know, some levels are off, and all of a sudden, immediately, oh yeah, it must be cancer. You know, cancer ran in my family. Cancer is this. Cancer is everything. You know, now, now you're self-diagnosing. You don't have any information. You just, your mouth. Yeah. Diagnosing yourself. Yeah. I probably have the bug going around. You know, it is flu. It is flu season. We always say that, right? I didn't, I didn't get my flu shot. Good. Don't get a flu shot. I don't get a flu shot. They always tell every time I go, you get your flu shot, Robert? No, and I'm not going to get a flu shot. I don't want a flu shot. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I, my, my blood is fine. Air, you can breathe anything. I mean, I'm good. No deadly thing will kill me. I'm good. Amen. You know, because then you come in, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying if you get your flu shot, freak out. Okay, go get your flu shot as much as you want. I'm just saying for me, I'm not, I'm not doing flu shots. If I had to do it all over again, I would not do these yeah. uh, immunizations. Okay, I would raise my kids up and say no. And we have a right to say no. Yeah. Amen. The government can't impose immunizations. And they can't keep your kids out of school either. That's against the law. Amen. But that's a lie to tell you. Huh? Yeah, that's a lie to tell you. But you can't register. That's a lie. They lie to us. Okay? But it's all my kid, my kids now, their kids, my kids' kids, they don't know. And they're all in school, great students. Okay? You just write a letter and say, I don't believe you. I don't believe in that. That's the right you have. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, defeated self. These are self-imposed curses. Oh, life is horrible. Have you ever been around people that are just so negative? Life is horrible. Oh, I'm so tired. I can't stand this. You know, they're depressed. They're depressed all the time. There's people that even say, I've heard people say, I'd rather just die. You're, that's, that's a form of a curse. You're cursing yourself. 
And then, of course, what I call broke self. You ever, you ever tell somebody, go on with your broke self? <laughs> because what, why do you tell them? Because, because they're always talking about they're broke. Okay? I can't afford to give. That's what they, oh, you tell them to give. I can't, I, notorious for that. I can't afford to give. Pops, you don't understand. I can't afford to give. My bills. Go on with your broke self. Okay? You're cursed. Can't ever give. Just real quick, I do this, I just, we're almost done here. I do this in, um, in deliverance, deliverance ministry, um, and I show people about curses. You know, the Bible talks about three or four generations out. Of course, for children born out of wedlock, that's a ten-generational curse, okay? And we can break, the, we, don't be afraid of curses, you can break them very easily. Um, curses are more about mindsets, okay? So, for example, if you're a woman and you had, you had a child or several children out of wedlock, you want to now teach your children that that wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. So that they don't, you don't want to say, well, you know, it's okay, it happened. And all. No, if you are wrong, te tell your children you were wrong. Amen. Amen. We, try to, we try to avoid it because we don't want, you know, if you were wrong, Amen. you're wrong. How many parents in here have ever done anything wrong? Okay, just tell your children outright, I was wrong. And I did not know, I was ignorant of the de enemy's devices at the time. You could even say I was I had generational curses, I didn't have this teaching, we didn't have the, the information. Because if, listen, when you don't when you're ignorant, you're ignorant. Ignorant is not a bad word, by the way. I hope you understand that. I have been ignorant. Stupid is something different. See, we can deal with ignorance, but and you can't cast out stupid. Okay? But we can deal with ignorance because all we have to do is teach and train. That's why like things like life skills and all the other stuff we're talking about doing. We can teach people. Some people just need to be taught. Some people need to be taught. We were in deliverance in Kansas City, and there was someone that was dealing with some illiteracy issues and so on. That could be corrected. Illiteracy could be corrected, but we have to teach people. Okay? You can't just judge them and say, oh, you just don't know, and put them in a corner and let them get the fetal position until they die. No. I'm not doing that. But, but he, as far as curses go, um, you know, okay, so you have you. You had a mom and a dad, all right? So this is where Generation 1 starts, Okay? Actually, Generation 1 starts here, but we'll, we'll work it the back way. You, your life, you had a mom and dad. Now, mom and dad lived their life. They did something. Whatever actions they did, however they thought, whatever, okay? Okay? But mom and dad had a mom and dad, okay? Right? Okay, so now you got two generations, okay? And mom, mom's mom had a mom and dad, and mom's dad had a mom and dad. So this entire quadrant over here... And this over here, you add them all up, what do you got here? I think about 14 or 16. 16 individuals. Out of 16 individuals, did somebody have a problem? Yes. Somebody do something crazy? Somebody yes, think wrong? Exactly. Somebody, was, was somebody a pervert? Yes. Or was somebody into maybe some alcoholism? Yes. Uh, maybe somebody was uh, uh, defeated. Maybe somebody committed suicide. Maybe somebody uh, uh, had problems with, with, with money or whatever it may be. Okay? If so, in that mindset... That was in agreement here, went to dad, and then dad's mindset went down the line. You, you, you are basically a byproduct of the way they thought. Yes. Poverty is a condition of the mind, not a condition of the wallet. So this is why you have people that are, are, are in poverty because mom and dad were ignorant. <laughs> not a bad word. They weren't stupid. They were ignorant. They didn't know. Let's use, let's use, let's use black America. Fair? Is that fair? Because, because black America came out of slavery. Amen. Right? So you have slavery, which keeps people ignorant. Right? Slavery works because it keeps people ignorant. Okay? That's, that's its power. Ignorance. That's why, behind the scenes, they were always trying to learn to read and write. The strength was in the education. You got that? So, the Bible. They, they wanted to learn how to read the Bible. Right? So, but, but the ignorance of that principality called slavery, which is now abolished, right? But when the emancipation took place, mom and dad, and maybe children, with mom and dad here, that family didn't know. So, I don't know, can't teach. And if you don't know, you can't teach. And if you don't know, but what you think you know, you teach. 
The way you act is what you say, well, this is how I did it. Notice we say, well, that's the way my family does it. That's the way my mom did it. Well, that's the way my dad did it. So we perpetuate the problem. So if poverty thoughts are passed down, then you wonder why you have that. Okay? Uh, people, I've, I hear people all the time, well, I, I don't invest, I just spend my money to, to live. Because nobody was taught here to invest. Now again, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're white or black or whatever. Okay, but I'm using that as an example how through a principality, ignorance, that's the problem today. Yeah. Now you have some people that are becoming emancipated in their mind and saying, well, I'm going to go out and forget all this. I'm going to break the curse and I'm going to educate myself. You see? Okay? So when we talk about breaking curses, people think breaking a curse is a spiritual thing. Breaking a curse is not a spiritual thing. Breaking a curse is a mind thing. You understand that? Breaking a curse, you can't get a curse broke by lining up here and having me lay hands on you. That does not break a curse. Breaking a curse is when you make a decision. You hear me? Breaking the curse is when you make a decision that I will learn or I will do something different. I will change this behavior. And the only way you can change a behavior is by changing the way you think. Right? Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to move quick. Get out of here. Okay. I got to say this. Please say I it. I went to look at that scripture in, in um, Proverbs 6.2. Yes. And Amplify. Yeah, by your words, you're snared. Yeah. And, yes. Right, by it your says word. snared. Yes. And then it says, and, and, uh, it says, if you have been snared by the words of your lips, if you have been trapped by the speech of your mouth. So then I looked up what it meant to be trapped, the first mm -hmm. one. And it sure. says, to prevent one from escaping from a place. Being snared, is the definition of snares, it says it's a device that has a loop called a noose, which gets smaller when the end is pulled, yes. so that you, it's used to catch animals, mm -hmm. okay? So it's a kind of, a, it's a kind of trap. Yes. So I thought, okay, with, it says, with your words, okay, you've been snared, meaning you've been trapped, you've been put in a, a noose that tightens as you try to escape. Yes. So the curse is something that you have believed, but if you don't, if you perpetuate that and don't change your mind about that, yeah. it actually tightens around you as you try to escape it. Absolutely. You can't escape it except you believe the word of God. That's, right. That's the only way. That's why people, are, the, the curses keep go, going down generation after generation after generation. Because there's nowhere, no way to escape it except by the word of God. Right. Because those words have actually trapped you, have actually put the noose around your neck. Yes. So this is really powerful. I saw something today that yeah. I haven't seen in this curse Amen. thing that we really, that's we why we got to believe the word. Is. We've got to come out of alignment with what you know, we'll be the taught, what our family and says. It's, it's our belief system. And believe, belief system. believe what the word of God says. Right. There's no way to escape it, except you believe the word. And when you, and, and I like what you said, believe. When you believe, I, you know, people think, oh, belief. Where do you believe? Where, my answer is, where do, where do you believe? You believe the word. No, but where? Where, where does that belief, where does that <laughs> resonate? Well, in we, the heart. in the heart. We believe in our heart. Now, what that question becomes, what's the heart? And people have always said, well, the heart is the spirit. But the heart is more than the spirit. You see what I'm saying? And so it, it, it encompasses the mind as well. So when you believe, you can't believe something without having it travel through your mind. That's why the mind is critical to deliverance ministry. Less, we have exactly two minutes. Indications of a curse. Okay? And, and again, I'll, I'll share these slides with you on the, uh, on the uh, Facebook page. Indications of curse. Mental or emotional breakdowns. Amen. If you're having a mental or emotional breakdowns and it's in your family, that is an indication. I didn't say it was a curse. I'm saying it's an indication of a curse. Whatever type of breakdown that may be, emotional or, or, or mental. Chronic and or repeated sicknesses and disease. Chronic is the key. Chronic. Okay. And of course, especially things like hereditary type diseases, okay? Uh, we see people with high blood pressure, and it just, you know, we go back to that slide, it just keeps on going, okay?
okay? This is why the world is asking you, what's your family history? Because they know more about curses than we do. Barrenness of the womb, okay? Or chronic, not a miscarriage, but chronic miscarriages. There are women that always, they miscarry a lot, okay? Not all the time. Um, and female, specifically female reproductive problems, okay? And we can go, we can dig deep, we don't have the time to, to go into more of it, but, but perhaps later. Uh, breakdown and dysfunction of the family, critical. When, when families are dysfunctional, there's a curse somewhere. When mom and dad are not in the home, you have a nuclear family, okay? Mom, dad, children, okay? Now it's dad or children or mom and children or children, no mom, dad, you know, this, that, and the other, two men and children, two women and children, a mom and a dog and a child, you know. It's, 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 it's this, when, when you have that, that is the break, that is an indication, excuse me, of a curse. Um, and of course, chronic accidents. Now, just because you got an accident doesn't mean you're cursed, but I'm talking about, some, there's people that are constantly tripping, falling, breaking a bone, getting in an accident. They, I've had 12 accidents in three years. I mean, come on. You know, again, curse. Okay? Depression, suicide, and premature death. Huge. Depression, suicide, and premature death. Uh, my wife and her uh, family, there was a lot of premature deaths. People were dying at a young age. Anything, when people start dying in the 40s, 50s, younger, okay, uh, that's premature, you know? And it could be, it doesn't matter what it's from, if it's from a sickness or even murder. There, there's a lot of murders, okay, and family, there, there's young kids being murdered, that's a curse. Chicago, curse. Curse, okay, I'm telling you, it's a curse. And then, of course, financial insufficiency and poverty, Okay? There are certain families, they never had money. But notice that in the opposite spectrum, families that have money, they all have money. Amen. Because they're teaching their family about money. And the Bible tells us, have an, leave an inheritance to your children's children. So we have a responsibility to gravitate to and accumulate wealth and teach our children about wealth. Everybody in here should be wealthy. I keep saying it. Wealth is not bad. Amen. Wealth is a good thing, right? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Did you enjoy that today? Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. I want to thank you for joining us here today at the New Breed Equipping Center. Um, please go to our website, www.aotbm.org. If the Lord puts on your heart and you'd like to donate something to this ministry so that we can continue to go out and preach the gospel of the kingdom, we certainly would appreciate it. Uh, until next time, I'm Apostle Robert Summers. Remind you, as always, to walk in your dominion and authority. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.